and thank you very much for for being here. The first lecture is, is going to to be uh, introductory, so I'm just going to uh, tell you a little bit uh, about the plan of the mini course. What, what are the goals of the mini course? And yeah, so please also ask questions. So I, I don't really know what uh, what the participant knows. So if any of the of the of the uh, words I'm using uh, are not familiar to you, so uh, you can please ask so that I can explain what uh, what I mean by, by these words. Uh, all right, so this will be lecture one. And as I said, this is uh, some more an introduction. Um, all right, so uh, so yeah, the, the goal of this mini course is to uh, to explain uh, uh, or to uh, to give an introduction to unstable motivic motopy theory, uh, following the the work of uh, Fabien Morel, who is uh, also in Park City, I think. Um, and so the, the the main reference will be his book. Uh, so main reference is uh, the book of Morel, uh, uh, A one algebraic topology over a field. And so I'm going to uh, basically uh, explain uh, maybe not, not every, not all the main results, but but maybe some of the most important ones, and uh, sketch their proof. Um, this is a bit ambitious, and I, I probably won't be able to really uh, give full details, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to do my best. Uh, and yeah, of course, since this is really not not my work, so I, I should also say that. Um, that uh, all the results, of course, are due to Fabien, and uh, any mistake is due to me. So, right. So let me start with explaining the basic uh, setup. Um, so let's put on. Okay. So uh, from now on, I will be uh, working over a base field K. And so all the bright varieties will be somehow defined uh, over this field. And uh, uh, I will, I'm going to need to assume that K is perfect for some of the results, but maybe not, not, for every, not for all. But if you want to be safe, let's say from the beginning that K is perfect. Um, and so some basic notation also, uh, I'll write SMK, so this will be the category of uh, smooth K varieties. So algebraic varieties which are smooth uh, over K. And, um, and so here uh, on, on this category, we have uh, the Nisnefish topology, which probably you've seen uh, maybe last week, I don't know, I hope. If not, let me know if you want me to say more about this. So it's a gross indic topology, which is uh, somehow in between the, the risky topology and the, and the, and the etal topology. And so, uh, yeah, in, in motivic homotopy theory, we study uh, what we call motivic spaces. And so I'm going to start with defining what are these objects. Um, so here's uh, a definition. OK, so, uh, so a k-space. Uh, or yeah, I guess, guess yeah is so is is simply um, an Isnevich sheaf of uh, of can complexes, on this category of smooth uh, varieties over K. So what does it mean concretely? So it's this is first. First part of the definition. So uh, concretely, it means that I am 
so it's it's a functor which let's call it f uh, from the opposite category of smooth varieties so it's, it's contravariant for morphisms of schemes of varieties uh, to uh, to s this is a uh, uh, the category of uh, can complexes or uh, infinity category of uh, spaces or also uh, called uh, can complexes. Right, so it's it's a rule somehow that for every uh, uh, smooth variety associate some topological space or something of this kind. And uh, so the property uh, of being uh, a sheaf is the following. So. So such that there's basically uh, one condition, um, or maybe maybe two. Yeah. So so first uh, we want the, the value on the uh, on the empty scheme to be uh, just the contractible space, and uh, for every Nisnevich square. Um, like this. So, so this is uh, et al, and this is an open immersion. Uh, and so it's a, it's a square in the sense that the complement uh, of V is isomorphic to the complement of X, uh, of U, V as. Uh, Morphism e. So for any such square, we we, we ask uh, so that the associated square of uh, spaces, square of can complexes, um, f y and f p is uh, what is called a uh, homotopy Cartesian. Just simply Cartesian. So we can we can uh, think about f of x as being the homotopy fiber product of f u f y over f v, right? So this is um, what is uh, what, what I will be calling a k space, but sometimes I, I will also be just saying a Nisnevich sheaf uh, depending. Um, that's the first part of the definition, and um, the second part is. Uh, Will tell us what is the motivic space or so motivic space GK space uh, space over K uh, is uh, it's a K space uh, let's call it X maybe uh, curly X such that for every so it, it has it has a further condition which is uh, the following so for every smooth Variety U, uh, we want that the value of this uh, K space on U to be equivalent to its value on the affine space uh, over U. Okay, that's uh, so let's. These are somehow the yeah uh, motivic spaces are basically the uh, what we want to uh, to study in motivic motivic theory. Um, any questions so far about the definitions? So if I don't hear anything, I will continue. OK, so so let me let me give some notations, which are kind of standard. Um, I see Mark. So, so. So, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's a simplicial set, so simplicial. Simplicial set. X, um, so, I mean, yeah, maybe the formal definition is the following, so that uh, you can fill in horns. So, 
Um, so there is like uh, for every delta n, you have uh, so called the, the horns inside the uh, the standard simplices. Uh, so so that for every uh, i like this. So what 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 do we what what do we ask? So we 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 ask that um, uh, if you have a map from delta n, so given any map from delta n, you can always Ah, sorry, it's the opposite. So, you, given any map from uh, the, the horn, you can uh, extend it to a map uh, to that. That's the definition. That's the formal definition. The uh, if you, uh, I mean, like the main examples basically are, are the following. Uh, you, you take a CW complex. Uh, again, let's call it X, and then you look at the singular uh, uh, um, this would be a can complex, and basically this is somehow this gives basically all the can complexes. Okay, good. So that's that was uh, the answer. So now let, let me uh, move on with the plan. So uh, some notations. Um, so uh, yeah. Called P of uh, SMK. This will be the the uh, infinity category of of all uh, pre sheaves of can complexes. This is like a very large uh, category, and so inside we have uh, some more interesting ones, maybe can complexes. Uh, so. Uh, the category of spaces, which I just introduced, which I do not like this. So this is, uh, I also sometimes will, will probably just write P Nisnevich, so to just to say that it is, uh, so that, that I'm imposing Nisnevich descent on uh, Prishiv's second definition, second uh, notation. And uh, yeah, of course, the most important notation is um, uh, this is the subcategory of uh, motivic spaces, and this is usually denoted by H of K. And the subcategory. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I should also say that this is, this is called the. Uh, Usually, it's called the uh, moral velocity category. Okay, that's uh, yeah the official name for this category. So, um, so in, in the exercise session, we, we will see some examples of uh, matrix spaces. Uh, yes, yeah, so I will not maybe give any of them now. Uh, but let me make the following remark. Um, which is somehow it's a fact of, of life in this, this theory is that it's usually quite hard to write down explicitly uh, motivic spaces. So it's 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 very hard. There are some examples, but um, yeah, but in general, it's 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 hard to write interesting to write down explicitly. Um, objects of this category, objects of HK. Uh, so instead of uh, instead, what we have is uh, is uh, a way uh, to turn every um, every given pre-sheaf into one which has uh, which is a, a motivic space. Right. So instead, there is um, like a universal way that is universal. Way of turning any given pre sheaf of, of spaces, pre sheaf of complexes into a motivic space. So, uh, 
what does it mean really uh, in practice? Mean that, that, that there are uh, left adjoint functors uh, as follows. So we can go from uh, this big category of uh, of uh, pre sheaves. Uh, we we can go to slightly smaller one uh, category of sheaves by what, what's called the uh, Nisnevich uh, sheafification factor, which, which is denoted by L Nisnevich. And then uh, we can go from here to motivic spaces by another functor, which is called L mod. So these are uh, left adjunct, so yeah, these are lo localization functors, uh, if you know what this means. And uh, yeah, so so we have we can go from here to there by by applying these two uh, these two functors. The problem with these functors is that they are, uh, especially the second one, they are quite inexplicit, and uh, somehow. We, if you want, uh, one of the main goal of what the theory is to understand uh, what these functors are really doing on, on objects. Uh, the, the, this, the, the first one here, the Nisnevich, is, an, is a nice functor somehow. It's it's what's called an ex, it's an exact um, localization, so it's kind of nice, uh, and it's really like a shification functor, but somehow in this higher Categorical uh, setting, um, and th like it's it can be given by so you can think about this as as, as given by the Goldman resolution, the Goldman, the Goldman resolution. Uh, we we will see later, uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, uh, a bit more about this second uh, functor, this uh, Elmot, how one should think about it, and give also uh, a construction of it, which is going to be used uh, tomorrow. Okay, so uh, and in particular, so uh, we, we can apply this to some uh, some example. And so let's see, for example, what the typical thing to do is to if you if you have x um, a smooth k variety, right? So then you have this uh, you have the Yoneda embedding. Uh, so you can you can up, you can look at uh, x as a pre sheaf offset. This is uh, the associated uh, pre sheaf sets uh, by Yoneda, right? As Yoneda embedding. And then you can apply uh, to this. Uh, I mean, this is already a sheaf, so it's. So we can apply to it. Uh, uh, and and then, so then we get something which is a priori uh, maybe a bit more interesting than X. Uh, so, uh, like, why as 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 a, as a motivic as a space? Sorry, Y of X is like discrete, so it's uh, the, the, the direction is kind of uh, constant. But then, when you apply this motivic uh, localization functor, you a priori you could get something which has uh, more interesting uh, uh, motopical information in it. So. And this is somehow what I mean, one, one way to think about this is that this is like the um, motivic homotopy type uh, of uh, of X. Okay, and of course, you, you can apply this. You can apply instead of X, you can take any uh, any pre sheaf offset. It's the same. Um, okay. So, any any question about this? Right, so uh, here's another uh, remark. So this, this is a uh, question, maybe. Uh, okay, so that, that was uh, one remark. The second remark is about um, the point inversion of this, which, are, which I'm also going to use um, very often, actually, even more often maybe than the unpointed version. So uh, let, let's okay. Let's let remark that that this category H of K uh, it has 
uh, two obvious objects. So it has a, a, an initial object uh, called empty, and this is because it's actually the, the empty uh, sheaf. So uh, for every non-empty x, it, it, it just uh, it evaluates to the empty topological space. Uh, that's uh, one obvious object. But there's also uh, the final object, right? So, uh, and a final object, which is uh, denoted by star, and this is the uh, the sheaf which which gives you um, the contractible space star for uh, as value of, of any k variety. Um, and so, uh, as usual, we one can consider then the pointed version of each k. So. Uh, Say a pointed topologic, uh, sorry, a pointed motivic space is just it's a pair. So when you, you have a motivic space X, and then you have a point, and what is really a point? Um, okay, so let's such such that X is a motivic space. So a point is really just the morphism from the final object to, to x. Okay, that's what is a pointed. And this, of course, it makes sense for, for, for a much larger context. So in particular, I can also speak about pointed uh, case spaces, uh, pointed pre-sheaves, and, and so on. Right? So that's what, it, what is uh, a pointed object. And so, so um, th th they form a category, and so we'll give a name to it. So it's called each case star. This is. Uh, the category of pointed uh, motivic spaces, right? So it's we are of course we we ask that the morphism of pointed spaces to preserve the point in the obvious uh, obvious way. Okay, so more notations. So so since we are uh, trying to do uh, homotopy theory here, so uh, we need to introduce also the. Uh, a version of of the homotopy groups of a space of topological space. So uh, I start maybe uh, first uh, in the context of k spaces, right? So Nisevich uh, pre sheaves, uh, sorry Nisevich sheaves. So let X be a k space. So just a Nisevich uh, sheaf of Kahn complexes. So I'm going. To, so yeah, we we we, we write by zero. Of x, so what what this is? Um, this is really the Zinistnevich chiefification or chief associated to the following pre-chief, which uh, takes a smooth variety and uh, gives you the the pi zero of the Simplicial set of Kant complex. Uh, Obtained by evaluating x on u, right? That's uh, that's what we, what we call the pi zero. So this is what what will play the role of the pi zero of uh, the topological space. And now, if x is pointed, and so I, I should have said it before, but uh, so uh, when I say x is pointed, I mean that there is a pointed, there is a specific point, and I, and I will not write it. Maybe I should write it here for for. Just write it once now, and so I assume that we have a point. Uh, okay, is a pointed motivic space. Then you can define the higher uh, pi i. So write pi i of x. Okay, so what this is? So it's just, it's basically the same uh, definition. Uh, it's Nisnevich. Chief associated to the pre sheaf, which takes uh, u to the pi i of the Kant complex, which is the, the pointed Kant complex, uh, which, is, which is this. And so for, for every u, I, I, I get a pointed Kant complex, and I take, I take its homotopy uh, group, and I should revise this. Okay? So these are. Uh, uh, these are uh, the object that plays a role of uh, homotopy groups. And let, let me notice here that, um, so 
so maybe a remark. So as as in usual uh, topology, and this, the proof is really, or we can deduce from the the fact, uh, topological fact, that these uh, so the, the pi i's. Uh, so they are as follows. So it's just a pointed set. When i is zero, it's uh, it's a sheaf of group. Uh, not set, sorry, pointed sheaf. Uh, sheaf of pointed of pointed sets. This is the case i zero uh, sheaf of groups. This is i equal one, and starting from i equal one, we have a sheaf of abelian groups. Okay, that's uh, kind of yeah. It's a consequence of the of the of the similar result for uh, CW complexes and, and the fact that unification preserve uh, this kind of structure. So it's kind of clear. Um, okay, now uh, this is not really what we uh, want to do. We want to uh, want to have something which is uh, which has to do with uh, this A one invariance. Um, and so uh, we have to define something slightly uh, kind of different. So um, it's okay. So here's the really, really the object that we are, we, we care about are the, the following ones. So again, let's let X be as before. So so either uh, just the case space or maybe a pointed case space. Uh, so. We define the pi zero a one of x. So this is defined to be. Uh, you apply this uh, motivic localization function. So you, you turn your x into a motivic space in the universal way, and then you apply to it the uh, pi zero I, I, I just defined before. That's, uh, in the case where we don't have a point, and if if we have a pointed object, then we can define uh, by eyes in a similar way. So, so we look at the pi i of the motivic localization of x, and it still has a point. So that makes sense. Okay, so these are somehow the, the main object of study uh, in motivic quantopy theory. Um, Okay, and so maybe here's a remark. So, so if X is a motivic space, uh, then it is equivalent uh, in the sense of uh, homotopy theory. So it's, uh, it's equivalent to its motivic localization, and therefore. Uh, these pi i's, whenever they make uh, a one, uh, are, are just the older one, right? Uh, but I, I, I will probably uh, keep using uh, this pi i a one, even if I dealing with a motivic space later on. So don't get confused about this. Uh, so, but even if if x is motivic. I'll sometimes use right uh, by IA1. Uh, okay, just uh, very much. Okay, any question? Should I move on? No questions. Okay, so now I, I can move to the uh, next paragraph where I will uh, want to uh, make a summary of the results that I will be discussing. So, uh, the result I will discuss. Okay, oops. All right, so um, 
so as as in uh, usual topology, uh, there is one basic problem, which is the following. So a basic uh, problem in or objective, if you want, in a algebraic topology. Is the following one. Like if you want, it's like a leading problem or something like this. So what what is it? So given a, a motiv, uh, let's see, let's write a pointed uh, motivic space X. So we can ask for two things. Like um, one one thing we would like to understand is uh, is what what are the, uh, it's homotopy uh, sheets. Understand the pi i a one of x. Uh, so, like in topology, we, we care about the homotopy group of spheres, and so in the setting, we would care about the, uh, these homotopy sheaves um, for x. Uh, and the second. Uh, Problem we, we could uh, care about is the following. So it's uh, uh, is to understand how uh, how X is built is built uh, from from this object from the uh, pi i a one X. Okay, that's uh, kind of. If you want the uh, motivating problem, and so you could ask, okay, well, why why should I care about doing such a thing? So the um, one reason for the, for for caring about this is that so, uh, and I, I, I give an example actually of this maybe in the fourth lecture. So uh, it could happen that like, like we have a space x, uh, a motivic space x, which uh, tells tell, tells us about some. Uh, problem in algebraic geometry. So, uh, and we will see the, an example of this is the following. So, uh, uh, there is like, uh, so so uh, there is an that is a motivic space uh, such that uh, if if you have a u smooth, maybe f fine. But uh, then, uh, if you evaluate this x on u, you 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 get um, so this this would be this will tell tell uh, tells you about uh, tells about vector bundles on x. And so, if we if you care uh, on, sorry on u, and so if you care about vector bundles, you you you, you would care about this uh, this motivic space, and then uh, you can. Uh, try to understand the motivic space uh, by first understanding the its homotopy sheaves in some sense, uh, and then uh, uh, second understanding how you can uh, recover this x from these uh, homotopy sheaves. Okay, so I I hope this is uh, enough motivation. Uh, we, we will see this later in, um, uh, in more details as an application of of what I will uh, be telling you about. In general, about uh, about this problem. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let, let me let me be a bit more precise about what about these two questions. So, so yeah, we all know that it's it's uh, it's probably very hard to to compute uh, homotopy groups. I mean, we know this for the simplest uh, possible case, namely the case of uh, spheres. It's it's a very difficult problem to to compute these uh, homotopy groups, but uh, but in, in this setting, so we, we could ask like uh, we, um, we could ask maybe some different question that, than in the topological setting. We could ask what 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 uh, what kind of sheaves do we really have here? So what 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 is, are, are these pi pi i's just like arbitrary sheaves of group, or they have some uh, specific uh, properties or structure? Right. So uh, and and we will see that in fact they are not. Uh, Arbitrary that they have actually some uh, very nice uh, 
uh, structure. Um, so uh, right, so so uh, so we will see. So so this this will be like the, the answer for one. We will see that um, these pi i a one of x uh, are uh, kind of special. Uh, right, so uh, that there are what what they are uh, what uh, called uh, so so at least for i bigger than two they are put uh, the, the name is uh, uh, they are strictly invari one invariant and so I, I say this in a, in a second uh, for two we will have really a very satisfactory answer we will see that basically the, the same uh, story that we have in topology uh, is is valid somehow in the setting so. Uh, are are you still hearing me? I I have a small. Uh... Not all. okay. Let's, so let let me continue. So uh, the second part is uh, what what we call the um, um, so the, the machinery of Postnikov tower. Uh, and obstruction theory. Is uh, valid in the motivic set. Okay. So. All right, so I was uh, giving you some definitions now. So, uh, right, so uh, here's First part of it, so a sheaf of uh, of sets F said to be uh, said to be a one invariant uh, so if uh, uh, simply if uh, F u is isomorphic and bijection with F a one u for all varieties. Uh, a sheaf of groups. Again, so here it's really uh, I'm speaking about sheaves in the ordinary sense. So it's just sets, groups, and everything groups. So a sheaf of group uh, groups F is is said to be uh, strongly a one invariant. Uh, if uh, for every u, the so a similar condition. So we 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 now we look uh, instead of just taking the. The, to the sections over on U, we, we, we look at the cohomology of U with values in F, and you ask this to be isomorphic to the cohomology of the affine line over U with values in F. And that's, uh, since F is an out, uh, the sheet of groups, we, we can ask um, this condition for uh, in, in two degrees, uh, zero and one. So. Um, and if if f is is abelian, we can ask uh, this condition for more in, for more uh, indices, and so that's what that's what we will we'll do. So, uh, a sheaf of uh, abelian groups is said to be um, n strongly in a one invariant. If the same condition, so for every u, uh, we want the cohomology of u with values in f to be isomorphic to the cohomology of the affine line over u, and that's for um, and now uh, for star being between zero and n. For every n, there is a priori this uh, notion of 
and strongly invariant. And so if if this happens for all n, so if if n is can be taken to be infinity, uh, we say we speak about um, we say uh, strictly invariant instead. Strictly invariant. All right. Okay, so this is uh, this is going to be an important definition in this mini course. So, okay. So um, let me now state some theorems. So, so the theorem of Morel, which somehow tells us about the structure so of these homotopy groups. Um, okay. So let X be a pointed pointed k space it's not more general to say k space than motivic space but as you okay maybe it's a nicer a bit i don't know um so the first uh, uh, assertion is that um, the pi one a one of x which is a sheaf of groups uh, is strongly a one invariant And um, for n bigger than two, the pi n a ones of x are strictly a one. And so this is a, uh, one of the main theorem in the book of uh, of Fabian. Um, let me make some comments so about about this. Um, uh, yeah, so here's some remarks. So it looks like the, the case, um, uh, um, the, the case of pi zero is kind of missing here. We would also expect that pi zero of x is, uh, which is uh, a sheet of pointed set. But it turns out that this is not in general, not necessarily um, a one bar. In the previous, in, in the sense of the, of the definition, that's one remark. The second remark is um, so we could what could expect. So one could expect. Yes. The question. There's a question. <laughs> So it's a uh, it's a it's a paper that you can you, you would find this on my web page. It's a short paper of uh, I don't know uh, last year maybe or two years ago. Um, it was a conjecture of, of Fabian that this was this was uh, true in general, but yeah, unfortunately it's not the case. That it's, uh, I see. Okay, so uh, one could expect that um, this by by and so that when we could express something like weaker or uh, that these are only are only uh, n strongly invariant that would somehow uh, maybe would be like in, uh, I don't know the first guess the first, I mean, this would what would one expect maybe but uh, the situation is really more nicer is, is nicer and, and, and in fact um, we do have that these are actually strictly invariant, and in fact, uh, it's a general uh, phenomenon. So um, um, this is somehow be kind of implied by the following uh, uh, theorem of, of Fabian. In fact, there is no need to, to define these uh, these notions for for every n because, in fact, every um, every strong, strongly, so strongly A1 invariant sheaf of abelian groups is automatically strictly invariant.
So this notion of any circling variants are kind of uh, redundant somehow. That, uh, yeah, there, there are somehow only two possible uh, things. So you, you could be strongly in one invariant for a, for a non-abelian shape of groups. Uh, but if, if you are abelian, you are immediately somehow the best thing you can hope for, which is strictly one invariant. Um, and I, I, I did introduce this, this notion of and strongly invariant because I will need it uh, later, uh, maybe in the third lecture. Because I, when proving this theorem of Morel, it's convenient to have this uh, this notion of uh, for every n. Okay, but somehow it's once you have this theorem, there is uh, yeah, this notion is kind of uh, obsolete. All right. Any, any question about this statement? All right, so I must say that this, this is a difficult, difficult result. Uh, I will not be able to really explain the whole proof, uh, uh, but I will uh, try to, to give you a, a bit of an idea of it. Uh, but it's also an, an interesting proof because it, it tells us also more about some of the structure of these uh, sheaves. Uh, so it's an, it's an instructive proof in some sense because, uh, yeah, we, we will see this. Um, uh, some some new uh, uh, structure uh, popping out uh, from the proof, um, and, and maybe let me give a name. So uh, some some names. So um, so we will use uh, a particular it relies particular it relies on uh, what 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 are called the cousin complexes and. The Conibus spectral sequence. Spectral. And it requires some lot, lot of force. Okay, so that's uh, one thing. Uh, and another. Uh, uh, Related theorem of Morel is the following. So, um, so we, we we also have a characterization of uh, um, of metric spaces using uh, homotopy groups, homotopy sheaves. So it's the following. So, um, yeah. So somehow it's, it's like a, a, it's kind of a converse in some sense. So if if X uh, is uh, it's, it's a K space. Such that, so uh, it's by zero is trivial. So, so I should maybe say connected, uh, pointed. Sorry, is it pointed? So uh, the pi zero is uh, trivial. So it's it's kind of a connected object. And the pi one of x is strongly. A one invariant, and the pi i's. So these are uh, the, the naive uh, multiple sheets. I'm not. I'm not taking the a ones. Yeah. So it's a, it's a non I mean, it's otherwise it could be an empty condition, right? So the the pi i's uh, are strictly, and I could also say strongly here, but since it's the same notion, we strictly a one invariant for i bigger than two, then uh, x is motivic. So one can really, uh, uh, yeah. If one, if one can, if, if for some space you can compute the, the pi i's and show that they are as so, then then your x is uh, motivic. Right. Okay. So that's uh, a fact. So let me now say some some word about uh, the Postnikov tower uh, in this setting. So. So this is this is what what we will see about the structure of, of the pi i's. Now, um, um, yeah, so, so 
about the post peak of towers. So here's another theorem. And so if you don't know what is the post peak of tower, don't don't worry. I'm going to define this, I guess, uh, maybe tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow, I guess. <coughs> so uh, so let x be uh, again a, 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 con a connected. So uh, be um, sorry. Oops. Pointed connected um, uh, motivic space. Okay, so then uh, the Posnikov tower tower uh, of X and I should uh, I want to say that it's we view we view we do the positive of tower construction in uh, in the category of sheaves so up. and so it's it's a tower like that looks, looks like this so. Uh, so this prosthetic of tower uh, somehow lives in lives in HK. So all the uh, all the, uh, the, 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 the uh, this uh, truncation x they are still motivic for every n. Okay, so this is one thing, and so uh, and moreover. Uh, um, we have Cartesian square like this, so uh, you, you, we can somehow uh, uh, we somehow tell us how how you how you build this positive how you build x uh, out of the pi uh, uh, i's. So uh, uh, okay, maybe for for simplicity, I will assume here that the pi one is also trivial, otherwise it's a bit more complicated. I will discuss the general case later, but uh, let's see if uh, the pi one of x is also trivial, so it's like in the simply, simply connected case. So then here uh, we can uh, we can do the following. So we have the nth truncation goes to uh, the n minus one. And so we, we can recover uh, the nth truncation from the n some truncation as follow. So there is a, a map to uh, the classifying space of the pi n. Okay, so pi n t1 of x n dvd n plus 1. Okay. And here you have the. Okay, so so you, you should maybe take a pointer here. Uh, Oops. Okay, so you can you can recover this if you know uh, basically if you know this map. If you, if you know the n minus one uh, stage of the of the Postnikov tower, and uh, this map to uh, to some classifying space, uh, then uh, somehow this would be the fiber of this map. Yes, and uh, um, so. This arrow here, uh, it, it, it's called, I think it's called the KN, or I, I guess it's KN. Uh, it's called the, uh, maybe the post of invariant. And it's, it's, it's really a cohomological invariant in some sense. So it's something that you can compute, uh, you know, uh, using cohomology. So, so yeah. And you, we, we will see some example of this, uh, uh, an application uh, maybe in the fourth uh, lecture. Okay, so this is this was maybe, maybe a bit of uh, of a long statement, but it's it's more like uh, yeah, kind of a technique to to 
to understand how a space is built, how a motivic space is built out of uh, the homotopy groups. Um, maybe one last statement. Uh, I'm out of time, but let me finish with, uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do the next time. Should I stop or can I? No. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So then, then I, maybe I, I tell you uh, what, what, what is the plan for tomorrow. Um, and then I, I, I finish. Okay, so, uh, so for tomorrow, hopefully I will be uh, do, giving this in person. Okay, so uh, for tomorrow, um, so the, I, I'm going to discuss uh, another theorem of Morel, uh, which is called the connectivity theorem. So, so we'll discuss. Uh, maybe I should say that the unstable connectivity theorem because. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and it says the following. So here's uh, the statement, and I, I'll, I'll explain the, the terms uh, tomorrow. Um, so it's, it says the following. So uh, if you take so if x is um, as a case space, so in this neighbor chief of Kant complexes. Uh, such that uh, the pi i again the, the naive pi i not, not not the a one pi i so pi i are are trivial in, in a range so uh, for for i between zero and n so this is what what is called maybe uh, an n connected uh, k space uh, okay so if this if this is the case then uh, the same is true for the A1 uh, motor groups. The same range. Okay, so that's, um, this is uh, what's called the connectivity theorem. So it's uh, said differently, so equivalently, uh, one, one way to, to say this is to say that the, the, the motivic localization uh, functor uh, preserve, preserve, Preserves um, uh, and connect connected spaces. Spaces. I guess, yeah. Uh, case spaces. Okay. okay so, uh, a, a remarks also uh, should mention mention here the following. So, th so. Um, so th th this theorem is proven uh, in, in the book of uh, Fabian Morel in, uh, um, as, as a consequence of a uh, lot of, uh, of, of probably uh, all, all the previous theorem I just stated. Um, uh, uh, but I, I'm going to give a, a more elementary proof. Uh, so, the, so, so, so somehow, yeah, I will give it a direct proof tomorrow. So uh, it's a more direct proof. And uh, yeah, which in particular somehow, um, yeah, uh, um, in particular it, it is it is it holds even in if he is not perfect. So holds uh, for non-perfect. Okay, and um, and we will see tomorrow as as a consequence of this. Uh, we can deduce the following weaker version of uh, of one of the theorem I said it before. So uh, we can show then uh, that the, the that for any k space, any point in k space, uh, uh, this the pi one uh, a one is uh, a minus one strongly invariant. Okay, so we have like a, 
we have a weaker uh, version of, of uh, uh, one of the terms before. Um, but yeah, if if we know uh, if if uh, so so uh, so in particular if uh, if we use uh, Morel's implication that uh, strongly implies strictly uh, we get the the pi i's are actually strictly invariant for i bigger than two. And then, okay, one, one can do the case i equal one uh, in a different method, but yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, yeah, what can I say uh, more about this? Um, yeah, so let, let me also maybe say what is the plan for the, the, the remaining uh, uh, lectures. So the plan for for lecture three, which is probably the most difficult lecture uh, for me uh, at least, um, is to is to sketch a proof of uh, this implication of uh, that strongly. So what I will, what I'm going to, yeah, the, the proof I will, I will sketch is implication that n strongly implies n plus one strongly invariant, and then of course uh, by induction you you get more as uh, here, and um, yeah, so so this will be, uh, uh, um, yeah, a, a bit of a technical. Uh, uh, lecture, um, and I have to I have to I have to go a bit faster than like like what I'm, what I'm doing uh, right now, uh, in order to somehow to 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 try to give you as much as possible, uh, at least the ingredients uh, of the. Okay, so that's uh, lecture three, and then uh, lecture four. Uh, I'm going to uh, sketch. An application, which is also in Morel's book, is an application to the vector bundle. Um, sketch uh, an application of this of these theorems of the theory, an application uh, to uh, vector bundles on uh, affine smooth varieties. And so, more precisely, I will tell, I'll explain uh, what's what one else called the the theory of Euler classes. So, Euler classes. Um, uh, which is the. Basically, the following. So, if you have uh, V, a vector bundle on X, so let's see, uh, rank um, rank R, dimension D, rank R, dimension D, then you have, uh, you can associate the class EV, which lives in some group. Uh, I guess it's uh, an R's homology group of X with value in some sheaf. Uh, let me write it down. So uh, I'll explain this later. So uh, K-Milner-Witt uh, R twisted by the determinant of the, okay, so it's a class, some homology group, uh, which somehow is, is, is really constructed using this obstruction theory uh, for in Postnikov towers. Um, Okay, so uh, and and so the, the nice thing about this is that uh, see if uh, if uh, the rank is equal to the dimension, um, then E V is zero if and only if you can write V as a direct sum of uh, um, of a line bundle of trivial line bundle and and, and the complement. So it's somewhat gives uh, as you say X is a fine. Otherwise, it's not true. Um, yeah, so that will be somehow the application of, of the theory that I will. Uh, 
time to stop. Yeah, it's time to thank the speaker.